Hey guys, welcome to Falcon Space. Today we're going to be talking about the Alice Fan Theory. Alice Fan Theory is based off of a peer-reviewed paper put out by Frederick E. Alice Fan. You can find this online. Anti-gravity with present technology, implementation, and theoretical foundation. It's put out by Frederick E. Alice Fan, and it was published in the Joint Propulsion Conference in Colorado Springs, Colorado, in 1981. So this is an old paper. Um, Basically, it offers a unified field theory, which is important for physicists out there, and you guys might want to check this out. It also offers a way to negate inertial mass, and explains how flying saucers will operate. Uh, in a nutshell, basically, it explains that in order to understand anti-gravity, you need to understand gravity. Our understanding of, of gravity, he says, is correct. Uh, Inertial mass, or the mass of the Earth, let's say, uh, causes a warping of space-time, which in turn causes objects to be attracted to one another through that warping of space-time. But what is inertial mass, and why does it cause this warping effect? Well, he explains inertial mass to be caused by the core of the atom, the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, there is subatomic particles, such as protons and neutrons, the protons and neutrons he explains them to be electromagnetic fields that are twisted in on themselves. So think of a torus or a spinning disk. Another form way to think of that is a fidget spinner. Those little toys that kids played around with for years. Um, and one thing you'd find about fidget spinners is that they don't like to spin, they don't like to move in any direction other than up, down, and along the plane of the spin. That's the uh, gyroscopic effect there. So he postulates that if you have a whole bunch of these fidget spinners in the core of the atom all spinning in different directions and with different orientations and different processions, what would happen is in order to move the atom in any which direction you would be forced to go against the uh, procession of one of the uh, subatomic particles, particles or more and in turn you would be energizing those subatomic particles by moving the atom. That energy is what we see as inertia, or momentum. All those effects he explains away as subatomic particles being energized. Now, the way you would negate the inertial mass is all you'd have to do is bring all of the subatomic particles in the core of the atom and bring them into alignment. If you can get them all with the same spin in the same direction, the entire inertial mass of the craft will weigh as much as one subatomic particle, at which point all you have to do is light up a light outside the craft, then you'll shoot off at pretty much the speed of light. This explanation also offers a way to do it, it's very similar to the, what happens in an MRI machine. All you need is a strong magnetic force, magnetic field, uh, on the order of 3,000 gauss or more, and you'd hit it with microwaves that are at the Larmor frequency. The Larmor frequency is the precession of the, electro of the uh, electrons as they process around the nucleus. So if you hit them at the precession rate, then they, st then they start to process even faster and you energize it. And then you r stop the, um, the RF for a short while, just stop it for like a couple milliseconds and allow the electrons to orient the, the core of the atom. This is kind of similar to what happens in, in a MRI machine, but you're energizing them differently. And he theorized that this will create, um, this will negate inertial mass. Um, his son actually wrote a book about it. You can get this for $15 on Amazon, Gravity Control with Present Technology, same title as the paper. Um, and he claims that this experiment was actually tried in 1994 and the results were 80% reduction in weight of an aluminum sample. Uh, it's important to use aluminum because the connection between the electrons and the uh, nucleus is, is rather strong there, stronger than in other materials, so we're using uh, aluminum with, with bits of iron, so the iron allows the magnetic field to permeate better into the aluminum. Um, the results of that experiment are put in the book. Again, anti-gravity uh, gravity control with present technology. 
the results are in there, but they they lost the equipment or the ability to uh, use the equipment because the um, university that they were borrowing it from needed it back. And rather than tell them the truth, which was that they made a major discovery with this equipment, then it's better, you know, kept where it is in, until the scientific community can you know, can finally analyze it. They decided to fight about who owns what in the company that never existed, and they ended up with a problem of having a hard time finding investors, and that led the uh, entire project to fall apart. Um, his son, Frederick's son, in uh, desperation, wrote this book and published it in the hopes that somebody else will take on the mantle and actually try this experiment. We're hoping to uh, try this experiment. We're trying to get all the parts together. Um, if it works, you'll be the first to know. Thanks for watching.